Uh, hey there, Russ here. Welcome back to the shop. Well, today we're going to talk about two things. We're going to talk about spoofing, and we're going to talk about my OTB power outlet unit. <clears throat> um, you got to stick to the end to find out about the spoofing. But let me go over this, and then at the end, I'm going to do a, just before the end, I'm going to do a demo on this, but we're going to plug in not one fan, this is a 12 volt fan. This is a USB fan. This is a power pack that I can charge off of a USB port. And I have this plug in going to another fan, to one of my Ryobi hybrid fans. And we're gonna plug this in and we're gonna run all this stuff all at once. So first, Let's take a quick look at what this is. Let me start by defining what this is and what makes this so unique. This is a power outlet. It doesn't charge batteries or, uh, as far as when it's using the batteries. Whatever the power source is, you have to take them out and take them over and charge them up at a power station. Um, but you can switch the batteries out and continue using this, whereas on most power stations, when you're charging them, you can't use them. So, this means that you can use this thing 24 hours a day. As long as you're charging your batteries perpetually so that you can just switch them out, you can continue to use this wherever it's at and charge your batteries even at a different place. Like charging your batteries inside your vehicle, plug it into your cigarette lighter, and use this out on a picnic table. So, it's possible. You can set those up. You'll find uses for this after you make one. But what makes it distinct is that you can't charge the batteries from this. You can only pull battery power using this. So this is a 200 watt unit. It means that whatever you plug in here, you don't want to go over 200 watts. So it's not a big unit. Don't try to plug your refrigerator in. But it is great and handy to have around. And it's very lightweight, universal. I'm going to put a handle on it. So... Uh, you'll be able to use this anywhere and be able to plug virtually any kind of common power into this and use it. So, let me show you what the, all the components are. I'm going to show you the wiring, and then after that, we'll do a quick demo. This is the power cord that I made to keep with it. And I just store it inside of this little pouch. And it's the cigarette lighter plug-in, and it's two alligator clips on the other. That way you can hook this up to just about anything that you can hook the alligator clips up to and run power from this to that at 12 volts. So this is something that will always be with this box as a one of the plug-ins ad adapters that you can use with it. And we're going to hook this up to our 12-volt fan. So I hook the red onto here, hook the black onto here, and I'm ready to plug this in and run it. So let's take a quick look at this, and then we'll plug a battery in and use it. First off, to use it, <coughs> you have to plug your battery in here, and you use a Phillips screwdriver, put it in there, turn this a quarter of a turn, and it locks it in. And it gives you your voltage. So now I can run the voltage. And it's all running off of this one battery right here. So to take it out, you turn that back a quarter inch. The light goes out. You can take your battery out. It has this 12-volt plug-in here. This switch turns on the USB and this 12-volt and these banana uh, connectors. So you can hook up all of these run through this switch. This is a 110, and it does have some USB up here, but I don't know why I would ever use them since I have these. Because these run through here, which means you lose more power when that goes through here as it transforms it from DC to AC. AC. But it does have the 110 outlets. 200 watts, anywhere on this, you can run up to 200 watts from it without any problem using the Ryobi batteries. I use the 5 amp power batteries for everything I do. And when I build the battery bank, which I talked about in my last video, uh, the battery bank 
will also be based on one plus batteries and I'm using five amp hour batteries as my battery source for doing everything so I'll have several five those are the same batteries I use in my shop anyway so I can grab them all put them into a battery pack grab a battery uh, power outlet and take off so uh, I have not put the plug-in on this yet I'll do that when I get the power banks the um, battery banks when I get those built that plug into here then I'll decide for sure what plug-in I'm going to use to have on here to be able to plug it in there and you can use any battery system you want on this instead of using Ryobi if you have Milwaukee or Makita or whatever you can just change this part out here and you can use this to run any power tool you could also switch this out and use a generic 12 volt batteries that you can buy in 5 amp 10 amp or whatever amp hour battery you want to buy buy a, a few of those so you can switch them out and charge them and you could run the same type of unit off of those 12 volt systems but you would have to design it with uh, that runs off a 12 volt battery instead of an 18 volt this one is designed to run 18 volt batteries so if you're going to switch out that you might want to take a close look at the wiring diagram because you would have to take away the buck converter wiring diagram so let's take a look inside real quick I got this all laid out everything's labeled and I've had this all set up ready to go two screws is what holds the back panel on there And here it is on the back panel. Everything is labeled nice and neat. I have a line drawn down here and down here. This fuse, everything on this side of this line is 18 volts. Then it goes through the buck converter, goes into this fuse. Everything on this side is all run through this fuse for the 12 volt. So the uh, banana connector, the regular 12 volt outlet, the switch, and the USB all run off of the 12 volt size the volt light and the buck uh, converter run off of the 18 volts going in so I kind of got everything kind of wired down and wired together it seems like I have plenty of room in here the heat should dissipate coming out in the bottom and should go out the top up here so this is the layout of the inside it works wonderfully so that's the how it all put comes together Go back and look at the episode where I did the wiring diagram to see the exacts of how this thing is wired up. <clears throat> so now that we've got it, I'm going to leave the cover off. I'll put that on in a little while. But let's go ahead and let's plug this into a battery into it. And let's hook up some stuff and let's see if we can run some stuff here. Okay, so we have a battery and you need a power uh, Phillips screwdriver. There's a hole right here. If you remember, I used to... When I had just the board, it had this handle here that I cranked to lock it down. Well, at the end of that handle has a Phillips screw in it. So I can put this in here. I drilled this hole so this goes into that Phillips. And now I can turn it a quarter turn and it powers up. Let me turn that light off. That off. That's the switch that powers up the three outlets here. To run this outlet, you have to plug, turn this one on. So now that we have power, we can start plugging stuff into this. So we have this one hooked up. So let's plug this in. This is our 12 volt fan. And I'm just going to plug it in there and let's turn it on. And there, there it goes. Now let's plug in this fan. This is a USB 5 volt fan. And I'm going to plug this thing in right. Whoops there and there it is it's running if I want to shut it off I can turn that off and that turns both of them off you can stop any time now I turn it on and now they're running also here's a little battery pack that I want to charge up I can plug that into the other USB port and I'm charging I don't think you can see that flashing light well, maybe you can but I'm flash that means that it's charging so now I'm also charging this 
So, one last thing. Let's plug this baby in. Everything's running right now. We're going to turn it on. The little light will light up. Turn blue. And now, we can take our fan. And here we are running everything. So, and as you can see, everything does run. Whoops. Now you did it. So now you see how this thing runs. It actually works quite well. Uh, if you have any questions or any comments about this, uh, just leave them in the comment section below. But now that I'm done, I can take turn that a half quarter turn, lose this contact, and you can take your battery out. And now it's ready to be put up on the shelf. Um, I do have a pouch that I keep this in. Takes a little bit to fold it up and get it in there. And so this pouch, I'll probably find some kind of clip or maybe a, a binder clip or something that I'll attach. So I can attach this right to the side or something. So that I'll be, always have this connector with this outlet. But that's how it works. You can change it and modify it however you want. If you're not sure how to do those things, you want to discuss it, leave me a comment about it and I'll go over it. So, but that's the whole thing. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about, now that you have this, any questions, just as you know. <clears throat> oh, one quick thing. I have a vent right here. It's a 3 16th inch of a gap at the top of the box. When I put the back plate on here, it has that same gap at the bottom down here. So air comes in the bottom and it comes out the top. So any heat that's generated in here should be able to escape out through the top rather than getting building up heat inside of this. So I think that's all I really need. I don't think I need any kind of fan for this kind of setup because I'm only drawing 200 watts anyway. That's all this thing will do. If you put one battery in it right here, you can run 200 watts easily. If you want to, want it to run for hours at a time instead of, let's say you run off of one hour off of this, if you use the battery bank, that I'm in the, middle of, in the middle of designing, that will plug directly into this too. So instead of running off of one battery, you can have this thing running off as many as six or however many batteries that you build your battery bank to hold. And so you can turn this in so it would run for hours nonstop. And you can rotate the batteries because you charge your batteries separate from this. That's why it's a power unit and not a power station because if you have one of those other ones, those small ones, you have to charge them. You can't use it while you're charging them. With this, you can just keep your batteries rotating, plug them in at your car, start your car up and charge your batteries up in an hour, and then run them all day long out of this unit and all night, depending on how many batteries you rotate charging and using. So it works real well. It's very versatile. What are you going to do with something like this? I don't know. I am starting to find uses for it, is all I can tell you, but it's very handy to be able to pick this up and take it and draw power of any of the three major power sources that are out there, and I'll be able to use them with this. Now, I don't have a that 5 volt C plug-in or whatever it is in this, but they make those in little cigarette lighter type plug-ins, so you can just plug them into your cigarette lighter and then plug in those high output. USB and I'll be able to get one of those eventually and I'll have it to be able to plug it in here and plug in that sort of thing any future changes of standard plugins that really that will also be made I suspect to plug into a cigarette lighter type plug-in and you'll be able to use it so this will still work pretty versatile for most plugins that you might need to think up to put into this plus you could add more plugins on here if you wanted to you can put all sorts of different type of plugins at 12 volt or 5 volts or whatever you want so it makes it pretty versatile to be able to do everything uh, all these things that I've seen they always make them real small so that the battery is the biggest part but I decided I wanted to make something that had plenty of room to expand and to do other things with it and it's still small enough for me to be able to use it even with the battery plugged into it I'll be able to use this as one of my OnePlus power tools. So, 
looking forward to using this more and more. I'm finding new uses for it all the time. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is spoofing. Have you ever heard of spoofing? Well, I didn't either until the other day. Uh, you know who on her private phone number. She has two phones that she's had for 25 years. And they're in numerical order. So you know when you get one of those dialers that these people are just dialing the numbers one right after the other. It'll ring on one phone and all of a sudden two minutes later when that stops it rings on the next one. It just it's so obvious to her when those things are going on. Well the other day we had we got what you call spoofed. What spoofing is <coughs> is when one of those dialers they always like to put a fake ID on there so that when you look at the phone number to answer it, it looks like somebody from your area code. You go, I don't recognize that number. Who is that? And so that gets them to answer. Well, if they haven't been able to answer the phone, it just records that you called them. And guess what? They used her phone number to use as an auto dialer. So all these people were looking at that and saying, who is that? She was getting calls. In the first half hour, she got like 10 calls. <clears throat> and it said... That, hey, you called me. I just wonder, who is this? What do you want? She, I didn't call you. So the, after about 20, 30 minutes, she asked me about it. And I looked at what was going on. And I'd never seen it before. But I kind of guess that this is, if these IDs were showing up on their phones, it's because somebody has, was using her ID, her phone number, as their phone ID. And so that's why they were calling her. Because uh, some people, when they get a call they don't recognize, they'll call it back and see who it is and see what they missed. Uh, I don't normally do that unless it's a phone number I recognize, but that goes on all the time. So over two days, she got over 400 calls like that. What a pain for two days. Needless to say, it was a little stressful in there. I spent a lot more time out here than usual because she definitely was not happy with that happened. We called the company where she has her phone. And this is where we found out that it was called spoofing. Because they said, oh, yeah, that's spoofing. Oh, there's nothing we can do about it. Sorry. <laughs> they don't even care. So there's nothing you can do about it if they happen to pick your number to put on their auto dialer. Hang on for a couple of days of a lot of phone calls because it could happen to anybody. And maybe it's happened to you and you already know about this. I'd love to hear about it if you know anything about this sort of thing. I think it's an interesting topic that I just learned. So, But if you have any comments about that. Leave them in the comments. In any case, I do want to thank you for stopping by. Don't be afraid to leave your thoughts and comments. I enjoy reading them all. And those words of encouragement is what keeps me going. If you like this video or you learned something here, and I would think that you might have learned something. Maybe not. Anyway, if you did, hit that like button. It lets me know that I'm doing the right thing. Most importantly, though, please come back again because I'm nowhere near done. Mm. Thanks. <clears throat> Thanks. And we'll see you guys again soon.